Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Vectoria Chronicles. This is the third part within this same beach. Like, goddamn, this place is for real. Understood. Okay. See, so yeah, it looks like they're trying to sneak up on me here. I don't know why I'm not getting the... the ability to shoot them though i really should be okay is it just because of the shenanigans that was in my way because that makes more sense awesome sweet dreams if i'm gonna burn all of her turns i've got an idea um this is that this is that strat that i was talking about uh wait anti-personnel attack anti-tank attack okay so we want this Because I need her to spend everything in her pockets. Which is all three rounds. Fuck you. I'm behind you. How could you possibly? Literally how? The hunt begins. Go right back in. We've also got that guy, but he's in cover, so I'm going to avoid him. Bro. Not cool. Entering combat. Okay. We can use our friend's corpse in order to see the proper area to shoot. God. Brutal. Their gunfire is exceptionally dangerous. Now we'll... I don't know. I, I guess we'll... Yeah. Okay. I got it. Okay. Why should I enjoy seeing dirt? Medic! Okay, cool. So she's been rescued, so no one's dying this... Immediacy. Enemy sighted. Provide the squad some cover fire. Yeah. Bro, that's not cool. Get out, get out. Get out. No. Okay. So if you're not up here, then that means that nobody's back down there. Which means that I might be able to get some work done. As long as I move quickly. Rosie's health is not looking delicious. One of the big problems is that tank, though. Sorry, fam. What? What do you mean? What do you mean, though? For real. Um, hmm. That's trouble. Bad business. Moving out. So, can I shoot you? Twenty nine. Okay. Who loves you? Who loves you, she said. Oh shit, I might have been able to run her out of there. I'm on. Okay. That's a big problem solved. 
All right. I'm sorry, guys, but I'm abandoning you. Ugh. I hope that's okay. Oh, the reinforcements. I think we're going to have to just handle the huge glut of guys at the start. Okay, yeah, well. Don't leave me here. I wonder if I could get the tank to shoot them. Yeah, they're super dead. I'm just resting. <laughs> now help me. Mm. I'm hoping that they'll be too afraid to try getting out. Oh. You're going to try to close the distance. That's stupid of you. My tank's over here. Okay, so yeah, it looks like they're leaving. <laughs> he shot his friend in the back. That's funny. Okay. The thing is, is that, like, this this camp is, is fine. The camp is going to be okay, and we keep getting more guys to it. Here we go. Fire! Really, huh? That could be a problem. Here we go. Does it make any sense for him to just like survive like crazy high shots like that? I mean, I guess this is anime and anything can happen, but like, goddamn. Oh, let's uh let's pull some fresh guys in. Here we go. I need you dead, bro. Fire. That's crucial to me. Good. Okay. We might be able to leave guys there. Okay. I kind of figured that it would be a victory lap here, which is why I was initially loath to end last episode. But it's really not turned out that way. This has been fucking hard. New target sighted. Enemy sighted. Medic. This might be fine, actually. Alicia's good. That's. I don't care. Alicia would have been fine anyway. Oh, this is now like a month old, but like I learned that um I I, I was rewatching an episode and they were just straight up like, Hey, you only can have one guy on the train at a time. So that train from that one episode, yeah, you can only have one guy. Should've known. But whatever. Huh. Nice work. Keep taking them down. Alright, how much do we have? I'm on it. That'll be enough. That'll do. See, what I need is... Someday. I need to knock him down. And I need to get him away from the barrier. And if at all possible, destroy the barrier. Bingo. I'm on it. Okay. It looks like the attack down that he does to me is not as crazy bad as the attack up. Huh. Who are these guys? Bingo. <sighs> oh my god. 
that was that was the hardest one in a while. Just the fact that like the tank needs to spend turns smoking things and you can't have the tank be on the attack is problematic. <laughs> that makes it really hard. Again, I am pleased with how this game like continues to introduce new crazier crazy shit every single level. I don't even know what that is. Oh, cool. Um, but yeah, like, woof. Cool. Isara. Hi, Rosie. How can I help you? Well, and you know what? You have already. Aw, we've earned the right you to know see the this. Doll I, made? I didn't know you kept it. You said it was a protective charm, didn't you? <laughs> I still owe you one from the feast, so anything you want, just name it. <laughs> Let me think. You know what? I'd like to hear you sing, Rosie. Damn. You want me to sing. Straight yes. to the throat. You told me before that you always enjoyed it. I'd really love to hear you. I bet you're great. Okay, then. Her midriff is exposed in this gear. God damn it. Isara. Down! No. Isara. Don't you die on me, Isara. Don't... I still don't shake her. I even had the chance to say thank you yet. Oh fuck, man. Sure you did. We're friends. That's brutal. I like the dual meaning of sure you did in response to uh, you never had a chance to thank. Because, like, on the one hand, yes, you did have a chance to thank her, and it was just you that stood in the way of it. But also, like, you did technically thank her. I want it. I so want it. This sucks. To make it real. Just for you, Wilkes. My dream? What do you mean? A whole bunch of bugs. Before you said you wanted to, to fly. Remember? You wanted oh God. wings so we could see the Why hasn't the medic run up yet? I know that it's a gameplay thing, but for God's sakes, we have a medic. We will. We'll go flying real soon, Ys. I promise. Isara? This sucks. Like, I'm trying to keep my composure. Because I'm Let's Playing. But, like, this sucks. Dude. It's one of the hardest levels yet. And I get treated to having... Like, one of, one of, one of our party members die. Possibly. Step forward. On the one hand, it's a lame death because, like, she just got shot by some random, like, literally some random no name. But on the other hand, it would make sense, like, Thank you, Your Highness. this game is pretty straight up and down about, like, hey, war sucks. FYI. War sucks, though. And, like, it would make sense if. 
<laughs> Custom. Mags MR1. Cool. It's going to Rosie and uh, um, GSR1R. Okay, maybe I won't go to these then, because that isn't as cool. Um, like, this game is getting across the idea that war sucks, right? Because war sucks. And, like, in war, naturally, you have a whole lot of deaths that are just like, well, a stray bullet, like, randomly sailed through your, your torso. Ah, well. And like, I I don't I don't know if I if I like it one way or another. Let's catch up on these. I know that I I said that I wouldn't read them on camera, but I don't want to watch the next cutscene. I'm afraid of the bad news. <laughs> After months of deadlock, the Southern Galleon force broke through the defenses at Norville on the 14th. Built along a natural wall of thick forest, the enemy encampment had managed to resist all prior advance. According to the official report, Regiment 10 of Galilee's army was responsible for the victory. But our on-site correspondent calls a militia win. Mm-hmm. On route back from their operation, a barrier squad 7 met with a of the militia's 3rd Reg, met with a surprise attack from the Imperial defenses at Norville and engaged the enemy in combat. Uh, the brilliant efforts created a crack in the Empire defense that Regiment 10 was able to exploit in a blitz, breaking the defense line apart for good. Um, an EGP release that the 20th announced on the 20th announced the glory of speed, Goss. Europa's top motor race has been called off. This is the first cancellation in the event's 24 year history, likely the result of worsening in uh, difficulties in hosting an international race of this scale and the worsening conflicts unfolding across the continent. The process being made by automobile, uh, automobile makers today is largely drafted into military use, and more than a few manufacturers have spurned such public events for fear of trade secrets being leaked. Um, further informing the decision to call off the race. These explanations offer little solace to disappointed racers and their fans. Wall exclusive scoop. Earlier, early morning on the 23rd, Princess Cordelia was abducted and taken forcibly from the grounds of Castle Rangris. Subsequent invasion has shown the culprit was an invasion, uh, was a Federation ambassador Townsend in Gallia on an official visit. After a banquet in the castle, he forced the princess into a van vehicle he prepared and made for the port. Uh, thwarted by Squad 7, who recovered her in time, Gallian government has declined to address the matter publicly in an effort to not endanger relations with the Federation, while Gallia is locked in combat with the Empire forces. Like, I feel like we could have, they, they could have just asked about that. Like, I know that they need the neutrality, but I don't know. It's difficult. Uh, Welcome Gunther got the Medal of Honor on the 28th. Uh, given to those who've gone above and beyond in Call of Duty, Service Gallia. Unicorn Blazon Medal was presented by Princess Cordelia herself, who graced the young soldier with wishes for his continued loyalty. Gunther addressed the press, hoping he, saying he hoped to do the right thing. Do right by this honor by becoming a better man and officer. Medal hung proudly around his neck. The Gunther family has the rare distinction uh, among being the first to receive this highest of awards twice in as many generations. Yeah, because your dad got it. Uh, Galleon forces were successful in freeing the northern industrial cities from imperial control. Galleon army and militia worked in tandem to take Fosen. Fosen, diesel... That sounds like diesel, like the gasoline and Jan look. Are all of those supposed to be puns? Because Diesel might be a pun, considering that ordinarily this would be a Diesel Punk game, but thanks to Ragnite, it isn't. Uh, surviving members of the Empire's defense were seen staging a mass retreat from the north as the Galleon army began its seek-and-destroy mission, Operation White Steed. Oh, like a unicorn. You'd think that they would have used that name already, many times. As they hunt down the stragglers, Northern Gallia is all but completely free of Imperial influence. Just as lost the Imperial centers had meant a heavy drain on the finances, their liberation is expected to act as a shot in the arm for the Galleon economy. Another's use of the phrase shot in the arm. Books on the Vicaria of Legend are selling in record numbers as of late. According to a Galleon Literacy Review study, titles that promise the truth behind the mystery of the ancient tribe are enjoying special success. The tribe has ties to religion and history alike and lends base materials to any number of popular novels. 
The reason for the boom is uncertainties of a nation at war. A poll concern confirms the common sense notion that in times of peril, people are more likely to turn to religion to pray to salvation. Common sense notion like that. Recent claims of Valkyria working for the Imperial Army, still believe spurious, are no doubt helping to push the trend. That's all of them. All right. That was expensive. Come back and I didn't really think about that, but... Uh, anything to take the edge off. All right, pack it. What do you mean the personnel tab has been updated? Sorry, I was just about to watch this cutscene, but... Okay, okay, I'm scanning this. Okay. Like, it's weird because, like, I literally don't know if... Like, it's weird because, like, I literally don't know if if this character is dead. I can only assume because this episode's name farewells and she got shot. But, like, typically the rules for who dies in an RPG are all over the place. But in this case, I guess the rule that it was a cutscene, so she's dead now. Oh, man. Isara, the dreams you left, it's up to Like, it's such a lame death, but that's also totally the point. Like, completely the point. Or as hell. <laughs> hey, kid. I'd like to sing for you, if that's okay. I mean, after all, a promise is a promise, right? So listen up. This is yours. You stood always smiling, ever quiet. Let's fix that. Ever tender and I child always frightened I remember more that you came and found me blinded by unshed tears This sucks, man. God, what is it now? Can I have a second to mourn? Oh, Jesus, God. Yeah, that's that's uh, as updated as it gets. I guess they have to do it like... Oh, wait. Oh, there you go. That's what I was waiting for. I was waiting for the thing to update and say, though the operation cost her her life. Look, I'm not made of stone. I can be in denial. That somebody shot in a cutscene in a JRPG is dead. <sighs> like, 
like... Maybe the justification is that Isara can't actually fight, and that's why she hangs out in the in the tank, you know? She she can't fight, and if she gets, like, looked at wrong, she'll die. So she sits in the tank and, and actually can't take a bullet. Like, Welkin can take a few bullets. You know, he's only a scout, so not a lot. But then, like, everyone else can get shot a couple of times and be fine. Like... <laughs> Okay, this is a minor spoiler, but in one of the Persona games, there's a character, and you can see his health bar. And he's a party member. And he'll get shot by a guy with a real gun, and it'll kill him. Like, for real, he'll be dead for the rest of the game. <laughs> um, and then later, you fight that same guy with that same gun, presumably loaded with the same kind of bullet. And the gun does not kill you in one hit. And, like, it's just... I forget if I already mentioned what Persona it's in. I don't want to spoil it. I know that that game is, like... Those games are, like, old now. Like, the newest one, Persona 5, feels like it's five years old, and it might be that old. But, like, I don't want to spoil it because they take forever to beat, and you might not know. But suffice it to say, at some point, somebody gets shot with a gun that doesn't do, like, millions of health in-game. It does, like, maybe health in the hundreds, but normally in the tens, I think. And so it's just unclear how this character died because you can see his health bar and he has a significantly larger health bar than most people in your party at the time. But it's it's literally just that thing of like, it's a cutscene and they got shot, so they're dead. Like, it doesn't matter how many millions of times you get shot in the game, you get shot in a cutscene, you're, it's game over. And that's, that's what happened and I know that's what happened and I know it had to happen, but that fucking sucks. God, Isara's cool. Isara's cool, and she was getting character development with the other two, and they were being good friends, they were making friends, and like, god damn it. I should have, I should have figured that people were gonna die going into this game. It's a game about the war. Let's begin the strategy meeting. Although I feel as if now that someone has died, I feel as if I can relax, because nobody's gonna die for several more chapters. Like, that, that might make me, that might make me feel better. Might make me nervous in a couple more chapters when, you know, it'll be the gravita the, the gravitas of the scene that kills somebody. But until that happens, it should be fine, right? Ugh, God, I just want to take a fucking off, nap now. I need to ask. Lieutenant, how is Squad 7's morale? That's surprisingly cognizant of you guys. Considering that in our world, we didn't even know what PTSD was. We just called it shell shock and read it off. You know? It's been three weeks since we lost Isara. We're all still in shock, Captain. I'd like to see a timeline of this game. Like, I, I saw earlier that, like, oh, hey, this cutscene where he's presented with the medals on the 28th. But the party was on the 23rd. Or the 22nd, and the, the shenanigans happened in the morning of the 23rd. But I would like to see a timeline of how long this is. I assume Wilkin had to go through some form of basic training. Or at least briefing to be made uh, Squad 7's captain. Personally, it still doesn't seem real to me. I can't believe she's really gone. Yeah. I see. Nevertheless, you have new orders. I sent in a request to General Damon to allow this op and received full clearance. Are we going to get a cool strike? Because I'm in the mood for it. The task is to liberate a small border town called Brule. We know that word. The regiment will surround the area while your squad enters and secures the plaza. Oh. Any questions, Lieutenant? No, Captain. <laughs> I'm taking temporary personal leave, but I wish you the best of luck out there. Also, I'd like to introduce the new tank pilot assigned to the Edelweiss. Uh I'll do the best I oh. can, Welkin. Oh, uh, you know what? Fine. I I was about to be like, uh, I can't I don't want I don't want to see anyone new. And like, you know what? We actually haven't seen anyone new. I did comment earlier that like, hey, maybe we'll do something that'll allow these two guys to get in on the action. And instead of like them being just the the fake cause there's a thing that happens in a lot of games where, like, this is essentially a, a, a box that you go up and talk to, and you put money in, and it gives you items, right? And something that they've done in Valkyria Chronicles that makes that 
not the case. It makes everything more humanized. Is that like you go to it and there's a guy and he says hi to you every time. Like you're not just going into the level up screen and putting your points in. You go to a guy and he's the drill instructor and he says, hey, fucker, you're ready to do some training so you're not going to die out there because people die out there. You know, you will only be classifiable as human when I am through training you. And like that, that does an excellent job of, of humanizing you. But the thing is like, it's not advised, but you could play the game um, with minimal or no interaction with those characters because you can skip their cutscenes or just not go see them. And again, I don't really foresee how, but you could do that technically. Um, and like I commented on how in order to make the game feel more, I don't know how to put this, like feel more real, more tangible. I, I assumed that they might put those characters who we only see in cutscenes into the party. So then we interact with them as party members. And that is what has been happening. Um, Kazaka was initially just some guy who's our informant. And now he's a tank commander and he has a tank of his own. And, uh, you know, Kreese here was not a part of the party because he was... Um, Who's the regular guy? Leon, I think. Leon is the guy who is normally the dude in charge of the upgrades. And and then occasionally we'll see, you know, Kreese just hanging out in there. But yes, this is some this is something of what I thought would happen, but I assumed that he was gonna get his own unit, like he was gonna get the plane on account of well, why would he need to pilot a tank? Isara and Welkin pilot the tank. And you know, because how could I have seen this coming? Reese. He recently volunteered to be a pilot. I'm hereby assigning him to Squad 7. Cool. Isara inherited the Edelweiss from her father. I'd like to take over where she left off. Your voice is a little dorky. Thank you, Kreese. Yeah. That concludes our meeting. I look forward to good news from Brule. Dismissed. Brule, huh? I guess it's probably a thing where, like, hey, let's reuse these assets. But also, like, man, the fact that we're getting, like, oh, sorry, I just got a pang. Like, uh, uh, just, you know, one of those little shocks of agony that God sends to you to keep you humble. Like, I figured that, uh, I didn't figure that we would go back there to, like, reuse those assets. Because, hey, game design's expensive. But it makes sense that we would go back there and like, it's an important thing because it's, it's the house, it's the base, it's where we lived up until the start of the story. But like, the fact that we're going home and we're going to reclaim that, like, it's a little Attack on Titan. I know that this predates it, but it reminds me of Attack on Titan and like how the whole first couple years of Attack on Titan are like, we got to get back to the wall, we got to get back to the basement, we got to figure out what's in there. Lost, and Gregor with it, in a warrior's death. Yeah, of course you would give a shit about how it was a warrior's death. Um, but it it is it is heartbreaking that like imagine if when getting back to Aaron's house and Attack on Titan, we were missing like a crucial essential party member. And I know like a lot of people died, but in the grand scheme of things, for the most part, important people did not die in Attack on Titan unless it was like completely their time. Like when that guy who was blonde died, or that guy with black hair died in Attack on Titan. I was like, well, I feel as though I've seen the breadth of their of their character arc. And, you know, their their death is it is a good death. Or or they're just some rando who dies and like But with this, like Isara had so much more to do. Like, she didn't actually get a chance to be friends with him. She just had a meeting, like an encounter with Rosie where they weren't like exchanging hate crimes and, and prejudice. What comes next, Maximilian? Things aren't looking very good these days. <sighs> the Empire claimed the earliest victories, and most of Gallia with them. Yeah. Their struggles since have bested the detachments holding each location. Meaning, we reconcentrate our forces. Word. Yes. Send word to gather our armies on the Nagyar Plain. Silvaria. The time has come to show rubes your power. Sir. 
by my Valkyrian blood. Okay, so I yeah, she outright says it. I guess that makes sense that she would have white hair and red eyes. Now just looking at it, of course. Is there a combination of colors that is more anime than white hair, long, red eyes? You get serious. Like, because I know that a lot of people are like piercing blue eyes, the most, the most magical of eye color. But like, people have blue eyes in real life. Like, my, my sister has blue eyes. It's not that crazy. And like, sometimes it's like, ooh, hazel eyes. Because hazel eyes are like the rarest eye color, but I have hazel eyes. Um, and, and like, um, of, of the colors, like red, purple, and like yellow eyes, to be clear, like gold eyes are, are usually the go-to colors for supernatural stuff. But like eyes being gold makes people think of like glaucoma or, or something wrong with your eyes. And purple is, is usually seen as like a positive thing and, and something that isn't like powerful. But like I like purple eyes. I think having purple eyes should be the thing. I would have purple eyes if I didn't have a beautiful eye color already. And that's good news for me and the prospects for Firald's reinstatement. Once we conquer Gallia, you shall have independence yep. for your I suspected land. this, because he doesn't look like let's be frank here. Emperor Maximilian is Aryan as fuck. He has white fucking skin. He has blonde hair and he has blue eyes. Of course he's supposed to be like anime Hitler, but it makes sense. And Maximilian does not look like any of them. Maximilian doesn't look like anyone involved. Like Granted, again, Bless is, is from a different, uh, different ethnic group because she's Valkyrian, presumably. Um, but the rest of the troops are all, like, Aryan or Germanic in nature. But then Jaeger is, does not look like them and even dresses differently because he, he has accoutrement like the, the, the wolf skull or the... It's some horn animal. I think it's a ram. Um, and he wears, like, thicker armor as though he's going to be fighting with swords, but he's in a tank and he's going to be shot at. Like, you, you wear you wear different armor to go in to fight with a sword and spear, and he's wearing armor like that. But until then, you have no country of your own. You shall serve But yeah, I figured that he would be fighting life. to independize his own country. I'm well aware, Your Grace. The like, there's a lot of countries like that. No like, of mine. I... I want to say Italy in World War II fought for that reason. Because they were just like, oh, hey, someone's taken over all over all of Europe. Why don't we just throw our lot in with the winners? And and then they did the opposite when they were losing. Million, you will be victorious. That's the only reason I'm fighting this war. Again, like, I should dislike this character because he's opportunistic and he's only in it for himself. And he's literally picking the winning side because they're the winning side, but he's so cool that I can't hate him. Roddy Yeager, dude. What a fucking, what a badass guy. Man, turn to Brawl. Oh, okay. We're back. Back to where it all started. Yeah, like, going, going back to your home without, uh... Ah. Uh, Alicia, Isara, and and Welkin are the 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 power trio. That's the those are the first three characters that we even got. It's been five months since we left Brule. Oh well, that clarifies the um timeline for me a little. Now, all but one of us is back to make this home again. Hmm. Yeah, don't remind me, dude. Captain Verat said she specifically requested this operation from General Damon. She said that. Yes. You know how she feels about him, but she begged him to give us Brule. I kind of, like, it, it's probably because, like, this is something where it's like, hey, it's the hometown. We got to do it for everyone. Th this is one of those things where it's like, it, it is moralizing to even try. Like, reclaiming your hometown, re re uh, re um, what is the term? Revankism? Like, look, people are like, there's no such thing as a just war, but, like, they're wrong. Getting the invaders out of your country and reclaiming things that you already had is a just war. Now, some people wouldn't even clarify that as war, because, you know, it's not like you're waging war. Somebody else is doing a war on you, and you're just responding in kind and getting back what you already had. But, 
that's a whole other discussion on whether or not that counts. But in my opinion, that is that is a noble thing to do. And like doing things noble in the in the face of such horrible disparity and, and darkness and bad stuff going down. She wanted that's to moralizing. That's fighting. good. That helps you. To help us get past Isara's death. For right Fuck. now, let's stop thinking and just move forward. Yep, yep, figures. Heard that before. Let's take back our... Take back Isara's home. <sighs> Dude. Let's watch this and then I'll cut the episode. The next one looks to be the fight, so we can start it there. Back again. I oh, this is what you're doing on your time. leave. I gotta say, the meeting where we just pass by the final boss and, and the scariest person we've met so far. We saw last time. No matter what I try, like, that's that's one of my favorite right. moments of just like, hey. And they're like, oh, hey. Like, it's not even like a, like a Final Fantasy X thing where it's like, oh, hey, I'm the final boss. And everyone else is like, word, cool. Because, like, we are actively in a war with the guy. What was written on those walls turns all of Europa's history on its head. It's staggering. It began, welcome Sister Valkyria. They Sister Valkyria? With their own. Is, is that gendered? Because if it wasn't, they would say sibling Valkyria. But I guess it would make sense that, like, if the Valkyrie are, like, supposed to be the Valkyries then maybe they're all female? The only two people we've seen with anything hinting at that is are, are both female characters as well. Because Savaria Bless and Alicia are both women. The door won't let me in. Given what's on the walls... Which might be why it was lost, her. because then... It appears to be the case that people have patronymic last names, or... Um, a woman would take her husband's last name, especially if this is supposed to be like as close to medieval, not medieval, um, close to like real world Europe as possible. Maximilian got through, but he had Selvaria with him. She must have opened it for him. Yeah, like if if your name if your names are passed through male lines, but your powers are passed through female lines, then um, like you might lose track of who's supposed to be a Valkyrie. Wait. The door was closed when we first arrived. It'd be interesting if it turned out that Silvaria wasn't even like super strong of a Valkyrie. I guess I can cut um Faldio some slack because we've been very fucking busy. I can only assume he's doing his own Valkyria Chronicles off screen of like He's probably having even more losses than we are because he's not the special protagonist, boys. Like, he had that moment where he was like, hey, we have to fucking leave because we're getting our ass blown up um, when uh, the, the Batamus, the tank, came in. So he's probably had significant losses, more so than we have. We've only had two losses, and only one of them was canonical. No, it's not. The chances of her. No. He's putting no it together. What should I do? Well, what do you want to do? Do you have some ancient quest to kill all Valkyrie? Um, I'll cut the episode here. But that's been Valkyrie Chronicles. Thank you for coming. Ugh. That one was hard, man. <laughs> that was difficult. That was hard to get through. I barely made it. I barely finished it. I finished strong, but God, Jesus. Ugh, I've been Alfred. This has been Valkyria Chronicles. Particularly heartbreaking episode. Like, I might... <laughs> this isn't a joke. I might have to go, like, cry off, off, off camera. I have cried before on camera, but I should probably keep those incidents at a minimum, right? I cried while um, playing uh, uh, Omori for the channel, because that, that was a blind LP. <sighs> but yeah, I'll see you guys next time. I've been Alfred. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Bye.